Something you always bring up to Phil <laughs> is um, how you applied for ISA. I did. <laughs> I did. I applied to ISA TV multiple times. More! Lunch break! break. Whoa, look who we have here. Steven Lim! Hello. Hi. This has uh, been a long time coming. Yeah, yeah, Steven's a really busy guy, you know. Um, no, a lot. no. I mean, yes, we were filming Worth It. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a teaser. Oh, ooh. Well, season six? Yes, season six. Which just kind of uh, started coming out by the time we were filming this. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. Six seasons, crazy. I had, I had no idea it would last this long, to be honest. Um, we made one video mm -hmm. and then it turned into like 50 videos so yeah that kind of happened with lunch break and then it turned into like 200 and something yeah yeah keep up yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay. i've watched many a lunch break you guys rarely talk about the food you're eating yeah let's yeah, talk it bothers me you know what why? you know why we don't talk about it it's because it's normally the same stuff every time yeah. it's like always chipotle pan. hawaiian food <laughs> yeah food. but now we have a food expert so okay. no let's talk about the food today you guys got me golden deli mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which i have never been to it's here in the 626 i've heard a lot about it in fact it's right next to Bubba Mofo. Yeah, fun fact. <laughs> so that makes Bubba Mofo the second best place to oh, eat at that plaza. Interesting. KK, love you, Phil. I actually have been wanting to eat here, so I'm so glad that you guys chose this place. We got it to go, obviously. You're not eating it there. So you're not getting the full experience. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, yeah. But I understand. Oh, for context, by the way, Golden Deli is a Vietnamese restaurant. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I got pho. Mm -hmm. Pho da biet? Da is that how you say it? Da biet. biet. You got probably the most Viet like combo here. You got the pho, egg rolls, and the Vietnamese coffee. Uh-huh. And what is this? I actually have no That's idea what this is. fish sauce. Mm -hmm. Oh. And where does it essential. go? You can dip your egg rolls in that. Oh, okay. Well, okay. to give our viewers some context in case they don't know who Steven is. Oh. Steven is a YouTuber. Content yeah. creator, host, producer. You're a lot of things, yes. right? Yeah. My Job title at BuzzFeed is executive producer. Mm. Oh, wow. So that's my job title. I don't know what I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of crazy because I feel like we've known each other just a little bit before that mm. Worth It came out and that you had that rise, right? Something you always bring up to Phil <laughs> is um, how you applied for ISA. <laughs> I did. I did. I applied to ISA TV multiple times. Apparently, Ashley mm -hmm. saw my application and didn't forward it again to Dan. <laughs> Because uh, they're like, huh, look at this guy trying to apply again. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just and uh, I was rejected. Should I just be totally honest here? Yeah, be sure, honest. Oh my gosh. Spill okay. the tea. So I had a video that went viral. It's called Asian Parents Reject to I Love You on my personal ah. channel. It honestly Classic. like one of my favorites that I made. And then BuzzFeed found my content, reached out to me, and asked me if I wanted to come work for them. Mm. Mm. And guess what I said? No. I said no, because I wanted to work for ISA. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> and uh... Was this before or after Internet Icon? This was after. I technically met you even before that. Because I was a PA on Internet Icon. What? That's where like Yellow Paco came from, Marlin. True. Right? Lana was on that Matthias. show. Matthias. Matthias. Man, you go way oh back. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so, and then BuzzFeed was like, that's, a, that's fine, let us know if you want to work for us. I say I kept applying, 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 never got in. So, Phil, Wes, transparent guys, all y'all. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. So then that's why I actually ended up at BuzzFeed. Yeah, and you know, it was the right move, <laughs> you'd say. Uh, so you're welcome. Mm -hmm. That's true, yes. I, I do believe that God has a plan for everything mm -hmm. and that there was a reason mm -hmm. for me not being at ISA, even though it was my dream job. But now you're here. I'm here. Kind of. Yeah. You made it. Full circle. Also, I have a question for uh, for you. Mm -hmm. Like, how much of uh, bean sprouts and cilantro <laughs> do you put in your food? Steven, going back to the food. I want to talk about the food here, okay? All right, so so Steven's um, still up to working you. on his meal. I don't like mint, so I don't add the mint. But oh, okay. I add a lot of bean sprouts. Okay, I'm going to go ham. So, from my understanding, you know, you had a, like a career change into mm -hmm. video producer. Yes. Um, this has been before you came out to LA. I was a chemical engineer. How far into that like career path did you go? Uh, I went pretty deep. I I graduated with mm -hmm. chemical engineering mm -hmm. from the Ohio State University, and then I worked at a company, a small company called Procter and Gamble. 
Okay. Oh, yes. yeah, very small. Small company. Mm-hmm. And one thing I did work on at Partner Gamble was I actually helped launch Tide Pods. The Tide Pods? The Tide Pods. The ones that- Your fault. That's why they taste so good. Yes. So then at my job, I just wasn't feeling fulfilled. And so I just decided to make videos on the side. Internet icon was part of the thing. Mm. Um, I went to something called the Jubilee uh, the Fellowship. Oh, the fellowship? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's so, right. Yeah, shout out to Jason. What up, Jason? Those gave me the confidence to take the leap and just do mm. YouTube full time, which was a terrible idea. Don't do that <laughs> in Ohio. I was broke for three years. All right. Can we talk about this egg roll? The, the, oh one my the, gosh. One of the best things about Golden Deli are their egg rolls. Dude, I yes. took a bite of this thing. This is insane. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, you can't see inside there. Zoom in on there. It's cool that you at least tried out that career path. I wish I had known earlier that I didn't want to do it. What do you think prevented you from starting earlier? I just had no idea what I wanted to do. Mm. Yeah, I wish I just tried more things in college, but I was pretty set on my ways, so. So video creation or making videos was always something in the back of your mind, like you always wanted to kind of pursue that? Not really. So I got bored and then I started doing all these different hobbies. And then my friends actually made videos for fun and they would just send them to each other like as jokes. Mm. So I wanted to jump in on that. So I started making my own videos and I would send it to them. As soon as I turned on the camera and writing, I started writing, started editing, like I fell in love with the process. Oh. And that's when I knew that I wanted to do it. <gasps> yeah. It's great. But then I kind of realized like, YouTube is all about that personal connection with your audience. Mm. And so the way that I was able to foster that was to be in my videos. And then when I came up with the show for Worth It, I actually thought a lot about not being in it, but I thought I want an Asian American perspective. Mm. And I'm the only person here I know that can like provide that right now. So hmm. that's why I decided to just, you know, be in it. Yeah, I think that's like relatable for us too. I don't think we intended necessarily to be on camera at Wong Fu, mm. you know, lunch Not break. you? Not, not even me. My role was like editor and mm. if they needed a body, mm-hmm. I would have to step <laughs> in and like when we made offline, it was kind of about the team. So that mm-hmm. became more present, but it wasn't necessarily um, this purposeful thing that was like, that's my goal is like to get bigger personality. And No, but I feel like I relate to you guys a lot because I wanted to be behind the camera and I still, my goal in the end is to be behind the camera. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, yeah, I just wanted to like provide a new perspective in front of the camera, especially at a company like BuzzFeed. Mm-hmm. And they were gracious enough to give me the opportunity. Yeah, so. and you're great at it. Like you oh. have a very genuine personality. Can we have good editors. It? We have great editors yeah. too. I just this plug out. <laughs> who's the head editor here? Who's no, the, no, I'm, no I wasn't editor? even speaking, that wasn't a uh, thing for me. I was talking about lunch break. They make us sound a lot better than we actually do, so. Yeah, exactly. Really, really I feel like I haven't taken a single bite. Barely touched Dude, your Dude, this spa. is so good. I'm sorry, I just like, I'm dying You should right just now. get like seven of those. Yeah, That's we should. Yeah. Yes, if you're a future lunch break visitor, order these. <laughs> Request Golden Deli. Golden Deli egg rolls. Oh my gosh. <sighs> like for you, like having a food show, do yeah. you feel like the there's a lot of pressure to, to be like very knowledgeable about the things you're talking about or? Uh, we position ourselves as not experts because we're not experts. <laughs> <laughs> For those who haven't watched the show, worth it. What we do is we try different foods, different price points, yada, yada. And the way that we entered it was we wanted to talk about food from a way that like you would talk about it with your friends. Because I was getting tired of how Food Network would portray food and put it on this like huge pedestal and, and then just criticize it or talk about it in a certain way that no humans mm-hmm. ever are around the round table thinking about that aspect of it. So honestly, I really hope that the future of food is accessible. Asian food wasn't accessible to non-Asian people because they don't know how to talk about it or they're scared of it. But if I can just make it in a way that somebody can understand the food mm. and want to try it, then I've done my job. There you go. Yeah. I think you have. I feel like a lot of my friends, even like my little sister, she went to Korea and one of her recommendations was like, this was unworth it. And she had to go there, you know. Oh, wow. I think that's normal now for that's people cool. to be like, worth it was there. Yeah. And you have like stickers on their like signs, right? You'd be like, Ooh, oh, yeah, you'd I be like, that. Yelp. Zagat. Zagat. Michelin. Worth it. Yeah. And worth it. <laughs> and worth it. Featured on BuzzFeed. It's crazy. <laughs> and then we need to make lunch break stickers and then they'll go on lunch break. Yeah. <laughs> Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's. Another part of like becoming like a um, personality, a, a public figure in some sense, is like events. But like, was that was that weird? Getting to the point where you have to like kind of present yourself in front of a yes. large audience. Okay, here's the thing about crossing over and becoming a public figure, which I, even saying that makes me feel the weird. Public inside. figure sounds weird. What you come to realize, and nobody tells you this, is that the way you perceive yourself 
doesn't change, right? Because you're just yourself. Mm -hmm. But then the way that everybody that's around you sees you totally changes. So again, it's like I think it's like it's naive to not recognize that, and mm -hmm. it's naive to not acknowledge it. Which I would try to deny it for so long. Mm -hmm. But I think I have to just understand that I do have a responsibility with my words, and some people care about what I have to say about some oh, things. Oh yeah, for sure. And then there's the whole question of like, where does your voice fit in with everybody else that's kind of mm -hmm. like around too? Like we have a lot of influencer friends and all that, and like, you know, where do we kind of fit into that puzzle too? Mm -hmm. Like, do you ever feel that? Yeah, I, I, and I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> like we're all navigating this. Well, Steven, I think you have a strong voice. You've had a huge impact on the community. Mm -hmm. I think you should be confident in it. And, um, you know, we're gonna continue to support you along the way as you continue to rise up the ranks. And feel free to, you know, send us a resume. We'd love to take a look at it. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've been wanting to be um, a grip guy for a long time. Okay. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm coming after you. Okay. okay after mm. Worth It, yeah. No, I would just leave Worth It right away oh. to be an editor at Wang Fu. All right. All you right, you heard it here. Heard it here. <laughs> Why Steven left us? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, follow Steven on all his social. Yeah. Where else can we find you? You can find me um, at Golden Deli. Okay. So go eat there. Bubba Muffle Cafe. Mm -hmm. They have some great drinks there. They have some great food. So I do actually recommend it. I'm not just <gasps> saying that for Phil. That's the endorsement. Yeah. Um, no, but where can you find me? I guess BuzzFeed. Yeah. Instagram. Yeah, follow them all those things. Watch season six of Worth It. It's out now. And uh, maybe on another episode of Lunch Break in the future? Yes, I yeah. want to cook for you guys next Lunch Break. Oh, yes. All righty. Let's do it. We'll schedule that. And also, don't forget to check out our Patreon if you haven't already. It really helps to keep this channel running. And check out wongfustore.com for our new merch. Like that. I mean, not new, but yeah. All right, see you next week on another Lunch Break. See ya. Bye. 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 I'm going to actually eat this now. <laughs> <laughs>